Today I've got a Food Saver V2490, and the symptoms are that it's it's vacuuming, but it's it's never finishing. So I think the vacuum is a bit weak. So first we're gonna try removing these screws in here. Looking at this and figuring out the pieces, so we've got the pump here, the motor, uh, this connects to the port down here, connects to a sensor, the tube comes through here. This tube has a little, um, when I open and close the door, I unlatch and latch the door. This little black washer here gets pushed up against this port here. And I've seen on the internet that this was dirty on one person's machine. That's not my problem here. So what I've decided to do is to, um, I've uh, intercepted the line here. This line connects here. I've intercepted the line directly out of the pump. And I've got my canister here, which previously has not been uh, vacuuming properly. I'm going to plug plugged it in. I'm careful not to touch any of this. Okay, close this door. I'm going to start the canister. I'm going to see if the problem is with the pump itself or not. Now, I was never getting to this stage where the pump is getting louder and louder and higher and higher pitched. Okay, so that's probably about the point which it would normally have cut off. And the canister is not just pulling apart like it was previously. And I got a nice resounding vacuum there. So the problem is not in the pump. The problem is with the rest of this piping. So now I'm going to work my way down here to try to figure out, so where is the problem? Um, it's probably not with a the sensor there, although it's possible. There's this T here. Let me try disconnecting. Let me try disconnecting at this point here. And I found I'm trying to disconnect these hoses. What you want to do is you want to twist. That will break the seal and make it a lot easier to get Some pieces of tubing out. Okay. So I got this free here. Let me now turn it on and I'll block this up and let's see if we get a better result. Okay, so that actually works. So the problem is after this point. So now let's see how to distinguish. Them. So I've got a T here. Let's just try disconnecting whichever of these is easier. Again, by twisting this, I can see. This guy's the problem or not. I'm gonna connect this one back up. Okay, doors again locked. That's pretty suspicious. It's not doing anything. So I think the problem is in this section here. Okay, so I, I didn't hear any changes. So I don't think the problem is here. I think the problem is in here going further. So let's see, where does that go to? Okay, so that goes up to here and into here. 
not a whole lot of place for it to go wrong. So let's let's verify this. It's always good when you're testing stuff to not only verify it one way, but verify it another. Let's connect up this branch and make sure this is the problem. <laughs> Sounds like this is working fine. Yep. Okay. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm opening the door just so I'm not sealing nothing. Okay. So the problem is this hose. So now let's take a look at where this hose goes. So I see some obvious screws here that I can remove. And there's so many different models of these food savers, but they all pretty much work the same way. You've got, you're going to find there's a pump, there's a sensor, there's a bunch of T's, there's a vacuum channel like this. Okay. So, okay, those four. Okay, so, hmm. This doesn't look defective. There's a line there, but that's not, that's not actually a split. It's just a marking. So one problem is I've got to close the door because there's probably an electrical contact. But at the same time, I've got to seal this hose. So let me think about how I can run this test. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll just plug that up with a pencil, close. So I've got the tube plugged up with a pencil. I'm going to disconnect this area so I know exactly what I'm testing. Okay, so what we know now is that the problem is not with the tube. The problem is with this seal here between these two pieces here. So there's a seal here and there's a seal here. So these two pieces when they come down they mate like that. And the door is supposed to hold it shut enough so that these seals seal it, but it's not. Um, we can verify that or at least check out the symptoms. By putting that together, I reassembled the uh, top part here, and I realized that both of these seals, they're made of foam, which is not a great lasting material, but you can take these out, turn them upside down, and I'm wondering, will that be enough to solve the problem? Okay, so I've got that sealed. Let's try this. Not sounding like it's working. No, nope, that's not going to do it either. So I think I need to probably order new seals here in order to get that to work. So I had one last idea, uh, and that is that the manual does call for these to be washed with soap and water and let dry overnight. And my thought was, well, water will sometimes help seal an air gap too. So I've washed and dried these. Now when I close it, Perfect. Let's try this here. So I'm probably still going to need to replace the seals, but this will get me working for at least for a while. Let's try the canister.
Okay. Nice and tight. Good seal. So that's uh, something you can do to get yourself working temporarily is to get get that uh, get those seals wet. Um, but longer term, uh, get a replacement. Now, according to their website, there's a little bit of five dollars for replacements. So I just gotta call them up and do that. But at least now you understand what all the different parts do and how to make sure where your problem is and uh, how you can replace the seals, or at least wet them down and get them to use. Bye.